Do you think improving your pronunciation in Spanish is just too stressful and impossible to achieve? Well, think again. I have a very effective Spanish pronunciation exercise that will only take 20 minutes of your morning. So for the first five minutes of this Spanish pronunciation exercise, what we're going to be doing is reviewing basic Spanish pronunciation rules. Are you serious, Joshua? Yes, I am. Basic Spanish pronunciation rules are that important. In fact, many of the pronunciation mistakes I have made throughout my Spanish learning journey are a result of me not focusing on these rules. You can find many basic Spanish pronunciation rules online if you just do a simple search in Google or if you have some Spanish speaking friends you can ask them or if you have a Spanish tutor you can ask them as well even in some of my videos I talk about Spanish pronunciation but regardless of where you get those rules from I highly recommend that you write them down in a notebook because we are going to be reviewing these pronunciation rules a lot they can be very simple notes just about how the letters of the Spanish alphabet sound because they do not sound the same as they do in English or just about the different vowel sounds so we have a e e O, U. I know that the letter H in Spanish is silent, so I could write that down as well, but it's not always silent. So you can also add in some words for each of the letters. So for example, you have yellow, which is ice in Spanish. So it's not yellow, but it's yellow. But then you can also write down the word chocolate. So there's a CH there. So in this case, for this word, the, the H is not silent but it makes that ch sound. So it's not socolate or cocolate, but it is chocolate. Hmm, let's see what else. Oh yeah, V and B in Spanish make the same sound. So V is not like the V sound in English, but it sounds more like B or, or B rather, or excuse me, B in Spanish. So B in Spanish is B, and then V in Spanish also is B. I've made this pronunciation mistake so many times. So we can have a word like bistake, and bistake is steak. So bistake, so this starts with the letter B or B. And then you also have the word bentana. Bentana starts with the letter V, but we're not going to say it like ventana, as you would, you know, think of the, the V sound in English, but we're going to say it more like B. Bentana, bentana. So bistake, bentana. But one is starting with the letter B and the other one is starting with the letter V. But in Spanish, they're both B. Is that confusing yet? During this five minute review session, I would recommend speaking aloud when you are reading different words that you have wrote down. So like I was just saying there, okay, I have the, the, the alphabet here. I have the vowels. Okay. A, B, C, A, B, C. Okay. A, E, E, O, U, just so you can get that practice in. Now, the next five minutes is going to be dedicated to listening to some native content in Spanish. So you could be watching a video in Spanish, watching a movie or a TV show in Spanish, or you could be listening to the radio in Spanish or listening to an episode of a podcast in Spanish or even listening to music in Spanish. One goal for doing this is to see if we are able to hear these different pronunciation rules when these native Spanish speakers are speaking. Another goal that we have here is to really understand how native Spanish speakers speak Spanish. So we are going to be listening very intently and focusing on the rhythm of their speech. We're going to be focusing on how fast they are speaking, the, the intonation, the pitch of their voice. And we do these things so we can repeat them as well. I call it my copycat method. So we listen, we figure out how they're saying things, and we just copy exactly what they're doing. Oh yeah, let me go back to the first five minutes. So one of the goals for reviewing the pronunciation rules is that eventually we should get to the point after reviewing them, you know, day by day, that we won't have to look at them as much to remember the pronunciation rules. So that is something that you should keep in mind as well. Now, for the last 10 minutes, we're going to be speaking Spanish only. So we are not going to have a script in front of us. We're going to be speaking freely. It's going to be very spontaneous. This step is very crucial for improving our Spanish pronunciation. What should you speak about in Spanish for 10 minutes? Well, here you can be very creative. You can talk about anything. So you could just be narrating what you are seeing in front of you, like if you are outside 
or if you are, I don't know, just like in a park or something like that. You can talk about your day. You can talk about what you did yesterday. You can talk about what you're going to do tomorrow. You can tell a story whatever you like. This is a very big challenge that many of us Spanish learners face when we are trying to improve our Spanish pronunciation because when we are speaking Spanish, we are not only trying to remember all these pronunciation rules, but we are trying to remember vocabulary. We're trying to remember how to conjugate verbs. We are trying to piece together these all these different Spanish words so we can create Spanish sentences. Then you have to figure out how to connect all these sentences. How to make all these connected sentences make sense. How to tell a story. And then how not to sound like a robot and how to sound very expressive when I am telling a story in Spanish. So there is actually a lot that goes into Spanish pronunciation. But the more that you practice speaking Spanish and you're doing this step and you're doing this whole 20 minute Spanish pronunciation practice, it will become a lot easier. You're going to have a lot less hesitation. It's going to be a lot less overwhelming for you. All right, let's give you an example. Entonces, una, bueno, una plática, una conversación completamente, ah, completamente completamente en español conmigo mismo porque en ese momento estoy solo y no hay alguien acá entonces tengo que crear una historia muy simple hmm, bueno por lo menos yo puedo hablar de lo que voy a hacer hoy luego yo creo yo voy a ir al gimnasio y me toca levantar pesas a montar el bici para precalentar las piernas porque hoy también me toca eh, me toca las piernas entonces después de eso qué voy a hacer quizás bueno no 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 estoy súper seguro bueno estoy muy muy seguro que yo bailaré en la noche con mis amigos porque hay un evento bueno un baile social que yo tengo muchas ganas de asistir. As you can see with that example there, I was struggling a little bit. So that's very important to keep in mind when you are doing this speaking practice. You are not trying to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. So please don't stress yourself out when it comes to that. Just speak to the best of your abilities. As Also, as you saw there, or as you heard as well, I was making some pronunciation mistakes. So even if I do that, I'm going to, you know, either repeat that word over again, like I did, I think, a few times with com completamente, because I don't know how to pronounce that word properly, even right now. I'm not going to get frustrated, but I'm just going to pronounce things to the best of my abilities, and then I'm just going to move on if I really can't say that word. Or, for example, let's see what else. Um, I got confused with the phrase me toca, because I've heard that before a lot. Like, my friend always usually says it when we're at the gym, like, como que tocas hoy. And then I was trying to figure out, should I say, me toca las piernas, or me tocan las piernas, or me toca levantar las piernas? But again, that is perfectly fine. The whole goal of this speaking practice is to figure out what is challenging for me to say and what I need to really work on. So, for example, that's also really good for you to do as well, is to write down words that you find very challenging to pronounce. And then during your review session or the, the five minute review session in the beginning of this practice, you can practice those different words. For example, tomorrow comes and then during those five minutes, I'm practicing the pronunciation of com completam ah. <laughs> completamente. All right, hold on. I'm gonna look it up on Spanish dictionary because right now I actually don't remember how it's spelled. Ah, okay, completamente. 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 So the Spanish dictionary or yeah, Spanish dictionary, Spanish dictionary.com is a really helpful website when it comes to helping your Spanish pronunciation skills as well. If you have some questions on how to pronounce a word and also just the, the general spelling of words. And please don't forget to be very patient with yourself and don't bash yourself. So don't say, oh, wow, I suck at speaking Spanish. My, my pronunciation is terrible. It's never going to get better. Be patient and also enjoy the process because your pronunciation is not going to just change rapidly, you know, from night to day. 
but it can take weeks, it can take months. In my case, it's taken a few years for me to really improve my Spanish pronunciation skills after finally focusing on them. So that right there is my 20 minute Spanish pronunciation exercise. I hope you really enjoy it. I hope it's going to help you as well. And if you enjoy this video and you like the exercise, make sure that you share this video with your language learning friends. Now watch this next video to learn how I improved my Spanish pronunciation.